Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a complete guide to Prandtl number. This is one of several dimensionless groups that we discuss here on the channel, and is also the first video in our May competition, whereby you can win £1,000 every month for an entire year. Details on the question will be at the end of the video. So the first question is, what is Prandtl number? And essentially it's one of many dimensionless numbers, which in this case is used in heat transfer applications. And it's governed by the following equation. So it's normally abbreviated to PR, and it is a function of the specific heat capacity, which is CP, the dynamic fluid viscosity, which is mu, and the fluid thermal conductivity, which is K. And if you were to perform an overall unit balance, then you would see that the units uh, which are provided here would cancel out and you have a completely dimensionless number. Now, if you're interested in learning more on the derivations of dimensionless groups and how you actually go about proving these, then I'll put a link in the description to a free dimensional analysis course whereby we look at things like the Buckingham Pi method on how to actually analyse and derive these special types of numbers. So I'll put a link in the description to that if you're interested. Now another way that we can think of Prandtl number is the ratio of momentum diffusivity over thermal diffusivity. Because if we look at it from the standpoint of the nomenclature in this equation, then we'll see that we have the physical properties of the fluid, whereby we have the specific heat capacity as well as the dynamic fluid viscosity. So this has momentum to it. Whereas K is the thermal conductivity. So that is the thermal diffusivity of the fluid. Now, Prandtl number is generally used to categorise the behaviour of convective heat transfer based on the thermal diffusion rates. And again, we can consider that if we look at it from the standpoint of momentum over thermal diffusivity. Because we can actually draw some conclusions based solely on this ratio. So the first conclusion is that if fluids with a Prandtl number less than 1, then that suggests that we have a thermal diffusivity which dominates the system. So they have systems that diffuse heat very well. If we have fluids that are greater than 1, then that tells us that momentum diffusivity will be the dominant um, of the two. And that's quite important for when you come to look and analyse your Prandtl numbers for different types of fluids. Because you have a wide range of uh, Prandtls depending on whether you have gases or whether you have liquids. Now building on this criteria, we can also relate the behaviour of the, the criteria in terms of momentum and um, the thermal to the thickness of a boundary layer. And the three conditions that we have, if we consider a velocity boundary layer and also a thermal boundary layer, which is governed here in red for the thermal and blue for the velocity, then the three conditions would be that if Prandtl is less than one, then remember that from the previous slide here, if Prandtl is less than one, that tells us that we have thermal diffusivity which dominates. So here, what that tells us, and you can clearly see this on the graph, is that thermal boundary layer is greater than that of the velocity. Whereas if Prandtl is equal to 1, then that tells us that the ratio between the thermal and the velocity boundary layers are exactly the same. So they lie precisely on the same axis. They have the same gradient at every point. And if we have a Prandtl that's greater than 1, then you can see that the velocity boundary layer is above that of the thermal boundary layer. So that's a graphical representation 
of the boundary layers governed by Prandtl number, which is very, very important for when you look at heat transfer effects. Now it's time for you to win a thousand pounds every month for an entire year. So all you have to do is answer the following question correctly. And the question is, is Prandtl number dependent upon the surrounding system? So it's either yes or no. But the condition here is you have to justify your answer. So if you think that the value of Prandtl number will be dependent on its surroundings, say why. If you think Prandtl number is independent of its surroundings, then also say why. To enter, you simply need to comment your answer to this video, like and subscribe to the channel, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the Facebook page, because that's where we will release the winner on the 5th of next month. And entries close on the 31st, so be sure to get your answer in before then. So that's the end of this short lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the idea and the concept of Prandtl number in the essence of heat transfer. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.